Hello, this is Scott. So welcome back to my data science and advanced analytics channel. Um, specifically, this part of the series is addressing time series and forecasting in R and R Studio. Um, last time we talked about uh, forecasting ETS models. Um, the time before that we were talking about estimating those models. This time we're be introducing ARIMA, specifically stationarity and differencing, and next time we'll talk about seasonal differencing and unit root test. So jumping right in, we do need to talk about a few concepts. I mean, when we talk about ARIMA, we are talking about one of the most commonly used forecasting techniques um, along with exponential smoothing. So to get into that, um, one of the things that we talked about was Previously was decomposition, which we'll be using in ARIMA quite a bit. Um, by decomposition, we mean by taking out um, a uh, seasonal se seasonal pattern, um, a uh, basically taking out components of a time series, and that's going to be very important with ARIMA um, and this concept of, of stationarity. Because if we have um, we have a non-stationary time series, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to difference that series. So what do we mean by stationarity? Well, essentially, um, a stationary time series is one um, where its properties do not depend upon a time in which the, the uh, uh, value was observed. So in other words, if I'm somewhere in the series, um, I can't tell any difference between that and any other point in the series. In fact, let's just get into some specific examples here of, uh, uh, and, and you'll hopefully get to see it. Um, sorry, that probably wasn't the best example, but essentially, let me let me let me talk about trend. All right, so if we um, if we have, let's say, this this bottom one, right? If if I have this this bottom series, um, this is non-stationary in that uh, if I know that I'm in this period of time, I'm at a higher level. I'm at a point within the series that is above um, the points previous to that series. So I have a a trend in this series. If I have a situation that is seasonal, right, so that's trend. So series that have a trend are non-stationary. If I have seasonality, um, if seasonality is also dependent, because if I'm in December and I peak in December every year, I know that in December, in the time series, that's going to be higher to the points previous or um, after uh, December in the in the series. So seasonality is an example where um, it's I have a non-stationary and I'm going to have to take care of, of that seasonality within the series. Um, also an interrupted time series where we have a boom, right? So this is an example of an interrupted series where I'm going along at some level information, by the way this is Google stock prices. So um, I'm going along here and I'm looking at the stock price and then boom, something happens at this particular time. There's probably an, a, a huge announcement or something that happened at this point. And I have an interrupted series because I'm going along here and then boom, I'm gonna I, I make a jump. That's an interrupted time series. And this is <clears throat> non-stationary as well because prior to this information, I have one model and after the series, after, I'm sorry, this, this uh, interruption, I have a different series. So that is non-stationary. But what about cycles like the business cycle, right? So, you know, there's a business cycle every five years, every seven years, every 10 years, but it's not every five years and it's not every seven years. It's you know, some of them occur in five-year patterns, seven-year patterns, 10-year patterns, but it's non-predictable. So it doesn't, it's not correlated specifically to a specific time. In other words, the cycle is not 
a fixed length. Like for example, when I was talking about here with the seasonal pattern, um, you know, if it's December, if it sails in the United States and it's every December, November, December, I can see a peak um, in, in, in seasonal sales, then that happens every 12 periods if it's monthly data, right? Whereas a cycle is not every X periods, it's not every 12 or it's not every 365 or it's, you know, it's not on a, on a direct correlation, something that can be predicted um, there specifically. So this pattern right here looks like it's pretty stationary in that it's hard to discern any trend, any seasonality, any interruption in the series um, that would would repeat. Um, I just have a single single spike. I do not have a new series here. Um, so um, so here again is is uh, something that's happened to the series at this point. Again, there's a change in level of the series. So I've got two different levels here. Um, here. It looks like I I have um, well a fairly white uh, uh, well I haven't introduced the term white noise but this is a fairly random random pattern so D uh, in fact um, is well unless I can determine some seasonality. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but yeah, there might be some seasonality here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that's probably non-stationary. We'll talk about a test here in just a, just a second. Um, we also we already said that B was um, probably stationary, and again, we're actually gonna test this series. Um, and then here, obviously, have a trend downward. Um, um, Here, this this might be stationary again. We can test that. We can test these others. So, anyway, let me let me clear this um, this drawing and get rid of the the pencil, and then let's go into R Studio. Before I do that, let me make sure that I'm not missing any um, terms here. Um, so we are going to be talking about testing stationarity in R now. Um, we just talked about stationarity. Again, differencing is to take out the stationarity. We'll, we'll be talking about ARIMA uh, models there. Um, random walk model is essentially a um, white noise or, well, it's a little bit different, but we'll talk more about that next time as well as second order differencing. And second order differencing is when a different uh, a time series, and then I um, have to do it again to, um, I have to do more than one differencing uh, of the series itself. Okay, so um, we're going to continue on with Hyman's FPP2 uh, package, and so I'm going to load that, and then here is the time series that we were um, looking at, so if I want to uh, plot that out, um, um, well, mm, mm, mm -hmm. I want to plot that out um, here, and if I want to use the auto plot um, package that we or function that we've used in the past, it actually is a little bit better. Um, uh, graphic um, with a with a grid on it. We also talked about the autocorrelation function previously. Remember the autocorrelation function shows that um, um, for, for seasonality where things are um, seasonally together. So I can I can use the auto whoops, I'm sorry, not the auto plot. Um, I want to use the um, um, the difference, the 
I want to be able to difference. But before before I difference, let me. We have talked about the box young uh, statistic. Sorry, let me go back. Um, I actually do. Um, I was going to auto plot the uncorrelation function here. So auto plot, and I'm going to assign. I'm going to uh, go ahead and do an autocorrelation function on the data first. And I get this, and wow, you know, um, we could definitely see that we have autocorrelation function. Here's the 95% confidence intervals down here in blue. So I definitely need to uh, create a stationary, uh, create a differencing of that, that series. Just to verify that with the statistic, I can run the box young that we've done before. Um, so if I do that, Again, the null here is that the, that I have a stationary series. The p-value is teeny, teeny, tiny, of course, based upon this plot. Um, so I reject the null and a, and have a non-stationary conclude that I have a non-stationary series. So I need to difference that series. So what I can do is I can use um, the difference function here, right? So here's the difference function that I'm going to apply and I'm going to assign to a variable name. And then if I want to see what that looks like, um, well, let me just plot it. Uh, and then just, so if I plot it, I get our, um, what we saw in the, in the PowerPoint just a minute ago. Now I have essentially this this spike is where um, and where the uh, where that increase in price. So what I'm taking here instead of looking at every individual stock price, I'm looking at the day before to the day after. So this is the difference of stock prices from from day to day. And if I were to um, plot the autocorrelation function. For here, I can essentially again apply the auto correlation function to this differencing and run that. And wow, so I've got now within the 95% confidence bounds, I have no auto correlation. And if I wanted to construct a statistical test just to verify, then I could run again the box young. The null is that it is. Um, stationary there is no reason to reject the null so we can assume that this difference series is um, in fact stationary all right so we'll quit there and next time we'll pick up with um, um, seasonal differencing and unit root test hope to see you then